Hey guys, this is Srini and in this video, let's have a quick look at how we can use LSTM for time series forecasting, except in this case, let's do COVID-19 total case forecasting. And in uh, video number 165, I did talk about what LSTMs are. And in 166, we already used LSTM for time series forecasting, except on traditional time series type of data, which was airline passenger. COVID-19 is a bit more unpredictable case. So, uh, in general, forecasting is a bit challenging because there are multiple parameters and variables. But let's consider, uh, you know, this this just uh, the total number of cases as a single variate or univariate example for time series forecasting. OK, and as I just mentioned, go back to my channel, Digital Srini. Please subscribe because there's a lot of cool stuff that I'm planning for you guys. OK, so in 165, uh, get yourself familiar with LSTMs and 166. Look at a traditional time series time uh, type of example. And I'm going to label this video 166B to follow uh, up to our 166 there. OK. The data set I'm going to use is the Johns Hopkins data set that gets updated every day. And uh, this is for the global data. They also have US only, even though we'll look at only US data today. But uh, they have uh, different regions uh, and subregions for certain territories, certain regions. And if I go all the way down, I'm going to use the US numbers uh, uh, from this data. I'm going to leave the link uh, as part of the description. Okay, now let's jump into the code. Again, since I covered most of the code, I mean, the structure will be similar to our LSTM time series. But for those of you who haven't watched it, I'm gonna cover a little bit extra, but not to the point it gets boring to the people who already watched my previous videos. Okay, so uh, I hope this zoom level is okay for you guys. Uh, maybe I can zoom in one more bit in case you're watching this on small devices. Okay, so let's start by importing the right libraries and I'm going to define a variable called country where we can easily define what country we are interested in uh, and then just look at the results later on, okay? And the data set, uh, you can download the data and then read CSV from your local drive. Here I'm directly linking to the URL where the data is uh, constantly being updated. So hopefully our data will be uh, the last day would be November 1st. So this is uh, all of that I'm capturing into this data frame. So if I open the data frame, you should see that. Let's go ahead and open it. So I have a whole bunch of countries right here and let's scroll this all the way down so you, we can see United States right there, okay? So this is the value I'll be extracting. So the plan is getting these numbers out and then reshaping or reformatting this rows into columns and then reshaping them into a series or a sequence that can go into LSTM and training an LSTM. This is it, okay? So that's how simple it is. Now, what steps do we need to take? First of all, I'm only extracting US, okay? So it should be just one row right there with the US values, the ones that we just saw. And then once we have that, convert them into columns, okay? I'll leave the code for you uh, to go through at your own pace, but we just now got that into what we call, uh, let's say columns, and then convert the date uh, format to month, day, year, and uh, change the index. So if I open this, you should see that our index is the date. And uh, uh, here we have one column that's called confirm. That's it, we have our data columns ready. Now, uh, let's go ahead and plot to see how things are. And let's look at this. And as you can see, there is a minor, uh, a, a peak right here. Well, if you just look at daily cases, you know, you can uh, see it in a different way, but you see how it reached a peak, came down, the rate at which it's going came down. And then now there is another peak right here, another peak right here. So hopefully this will go down because uh, I should admit US, uh, is not uh, one of the greatest places uh, that showed leadership in terms of wearing masks and getting COVID under control. Uh, hopefully new leadership sometime soon. Let me keep it that way and not getting too deep into my political preferences. Okay, uh, let's just go ahead and look at the last few lines. So as of uh, November 1st, 92 million people got COVID in US. Can, can you believe that? Anyway, okay, so how many days in our data set? Uh, 285, I believe. Yeah, 285 since whenever we started uh, tracking this or Johns Hopkins started tracking this. Okay, now, uh, well, we already printed this and what are we trying to do here is 
dividing our total data into training and testing data sets. You can just say use 75% for training, 25% for testing or something, but all I'm doing here is last 14 days, testing. Everything else, train. That's exactly what these lines are doing, okay? So there, there, run, the, run those two lines. Now, uh, in our previous tutorials, uh, we did exactly the same thing, whether it is uh, time series or any other type of deep learning or any other type of machine learning. Scale the data, so all the columns are comparable. In this case, this may not have such a big effect, but we are uh, trying to uh, uh, behave good here. So I'm using min max scalar, which is basically, it takes all the values and squeezes them between zero and one, or scales them between zero and one, let's say. Okay, so I just defined the scalar or fit the scalar, but I need to apply that fitting to the training data set and the testing data set. There you go. Now we have our training data set and testing data set both scaled, okay? Train has 271 days of information and testing has 14 days of information. They're all float 64 and values between zero to one. Okay, so now in the, in the, in the time series examples, last couple of videos, 166 and 150, 164 or so, we took up our time series and then we reshaped into chunks. If we say that, okay, I wanna look back time as 20 days, okay? You take like 20 days, okay? That's your X values. 21st day is your Y, okay? And then you move it by one or you move it by two, it's up to you. So you're kind of moving this and then creating your uh, training data set for time series. So you can write your own function, but if you have the latest version of uh, TensorFlow or Keras, uh, I think uh, I'm using 2.4 uh, version of Keras then uh, the time series generated can be uh, useful. And again, whatever I'm showing, it's not just in Spider. It also works on Google Colab if you're working on Google Colab, okay? I have tried the, exactly the same on TensorFlow 1.4. I forgot the Keras, corresponding Keras version I have. And uh, time series generated doesn't exist. So if when you're trying to run this code and when you see an error about time series generator, probably you have an older version of Keras. That's Oh, then you can write your own function. It's not a big deal, okay? Uh, please watch my other videos and other code uh, on the topic. Let's go ahead and use this. And how do we use time series generator? This is just like other generators. It generates data on the fly as you're actually uh, training it. And in this example, it takes its time series generator, it takes the time series and it uh, you know breaks it down into the chunks that we define. What chunks? Well, let's define our sequence size as seven days. Okay, let's look back seven days and take seven days and the eighth day as our Y, and then let's go ahead and train it. That's what we are trying to do here. And how many features do we have? So we can, when we are reshaping it, it has the right number of features. This is a univariate time series, like I already explained. So this is just one feature. Okay, now let's uh, uh, fit a time series generator. And the way I'm doing that is time series generator on our trained data. Okay, well, trained scale data. And our length is the sequence size. Okay, that's all we're trying to do. Now, if you want to see how many or how much data we have, the total number of samples in our original training data was 271. But once it reshaped it, like it divided that into chunks of seven, it's got 264, obviously makes sense because you're moving by one and 264 plus seven, what is it? 271, that means at 264 you have the last sequence. That's what it means, okay? Um, if you're curious, you can just print out X and Y values uh, from train generator of let's say 10th train generator. So your X is one by seven by one. It's got the right shape for our LSTM and uh, your y is one by one, okay? That's, uh, that's uh, one way of checking. Let's do exactly the same for our uh, validation or test generator, if you wanna call it. So let's go ahead and run those lines. It's doing exactly the same. In this case, we have 14 days, right? So you can see that. And now let's go ahead and import the right libraries for our LSTM. In fact, I'm not adding any dropout layers or any of the other layers, so I may as well delete it, but I'll leave it in case you wanna experiment different models. Okay, in this model, I'm gonna use uh, 128 LSTM units in the first layer, and then I'm going to add another LSTM down here with 64, that's why I'm returning the sequences as true. If you are going to remove this, then be careful, remove this as false, otherwise you get the wrong uh, wrong dimensions. Uh, you'll realize it when it throws an error, but I'm just giving you a heads up. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And by the way, after the LSTMs, I have a dense layer uh, with 32 and then the final uh, uh, prediction layer, okay, uh, with one. Okay, and I think everything is good. Now we are all set to fit it, that's it. Okay, and we are going to use uh, 50 epochs for now, okay? And let's see how it looks like. I think it should converge within the first 20 or so, but uh, let's just do this for 50. That was just a few seconds. It's not even using GPU right now, so that's good. Now let's have a quick look at, this is exactly the same code I use every time for looking at loss. So let's go to plots. Okay, that's, that's not bad. That's uh, converged. I don't think it gets any better if I train it for longer periods of time. So let's go ahead and do our predictions. Now, how am I doing my prediction? Uh, there are many, many, many ways. Well, the way you code, but all I'm trying to do is uh, define a variable, you know, a, an empty list and populate this empty list. So uh, my current batch is the training data set minus the sequence size, okay? Uh, well, the training data set except the last few data points. There's a minus right there. That means the last uh, 14 data points right there. So that's my current batch. And if I go back here to look at current, oh, sorry, seven, because we looked at seven as the sequence size. And then now let's go ahead and shape it to the right format. Remember, it requires a shape of one by seven by one to go into uh, our prediction. And uh, how many future days are we going to predict? Let's use seven days for prediction. Again, you can change any of this. And uh, for that, for those days, let's go ahead and predict. And all I'm doing is predicting for each day and appending it. That's pretty much it, okay? And now let's go ahead and inverse scale because right now the prediction, if you just look at uh, the predictions, wherever that is, prediction, prediction, uh, pa, 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 right there, this will be a bunch of NumPy errors with some values. But these values mean nothing to us. We need to know uh, what these values are. But one thing you can tell is these values are all larger than one. Or one is the largest value in the previous data set, which was 92 million or something. So our prediction is telling us that it's going to be more cases going forward. That's all I can say. But how many? We have to go back and inverse transform, right? So that's exactly what tells us. If I go back to rescale prediction, now I have eight and uh, whatever, those many values. We'll plot that, okay, and have a quick look. Okay, so now that we did that, we let's capture everything into a data frame for easy plotting. So first, let's capture dates, okay? So the index of our test data set is uh, dates, right? I mean, that's our, I think you will, you learn, yeah, right there, right? So I'm just capturing that into a time series array, okay, into that variable. And let's also add the next uh, dates for the uh, forecast period. Okay, so let's go ahead and run these lines and capture everything into a data frame and plot. Let's go ahead and plot and see how good the prediction versus. That's not bad. The This is the predicted and this is the actual confirmed. We are exaggerating a bit. I think this is part of uh, this is part the, of the stochastic nature here. So let's run this entire thing one more time, okay? And see uh, with new initialized weight if this gets any better, okay? Okay, I'm getting very similar values. So one, uh, again, I'll let you change the number of LSTMs uh, and how you design your model. But one thing is this sequence size, how far back you look at, uh, also has a very big impact on this because of this unpredictable nature of COVID. If you go like 20 days, I think it's going to be bad, but let's change it to five and do one more time. Okay, so that's not that good, but let me run this one more time because it was doing such an amazing job during my during my initial runs when I put the code together, but that's that's uh, the nature of stochastic. I should have saved those weights and then and then started from that starting point, but that's okay. Oh, this is even worse. As you can see, things will change, okay? Uh, one thing let's do, clear all the variables, okay? And run this one more time. And then I promise I'm not gonna extend this any further. I think it's already 15 plus minutes or so, and you probably learned whatever you could from this uh, video, but let's see how India numbers look like. And especially if you're from India, you can, uh, let's see if that's hopeful. <laughs> that's not good at all. Okay, so let's go back to seven and let's check uh, this for India. 
And first of all, I'm a bit curious in terms of how the cases looks like. Is it getting better or worse? <clears throat> oh, it's going up and up and up and up and up. Uh, that's not bad. It seems like it wants to flatten. And once the curve flattens and goes down, and if people behave well, like wearing masks and all that, uh, there is a lot of hope for India. So let's run this and see how the uh, output looks like. And you just have to take me at my word that it was doing a better job during my, uh, when I was putting this code together, although I was experimenting with different model architecture. So maybe I didn't save it at the right one. This one is not bad, right? I mean, this is actually, as you can see, um, uh, running very well with uh, the actual confirmed right there. Okay, so, uh, Again, you can stop the video if you want, but please do subscribe to my channel. And if you're curious about, okay, how it's going to do with a uh, different number of, uh, what did I do here? Uh, oh, sorry. With a, with a slightly different architecture, let's just change this to uh, 128. Let's just change this to 150 and 64 is fine and let's change this to 64 and sorry for doing this in a in a very ad hoc way if you understand like how many data points do you actually have and how many variables you are fitting and uh, is the breadth important or is the depth of LSTMs important then you can engineer these things in a much much better way okay so this is uh, obviously a better uh, way because we uh, went back to sequence size of seven and looking at us values and you can see how you can definitely predict this in a much better way so i let you engineer and i let you play with this but i really hope you enjoyed our well, I don't want you to enjoy at least you uh, about COVID, uh, but you learned something useful and uh, please do subscribe. I have a lot of cool stuff planned for you uh, coming up. So uh, I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe. Thanks.